Hello, everybody. The, well, it's another uh, great day in our space program. And if ever you've seen the evidence of this being an international program, uh, you're seeing it today with this crew. Uh, this is the, of all crews, this is the most international uh, that we've had and I think uh, shows the breadth of the cooperation around the globe. So uh, let's get on with uh, the launch and let me bring up our Associate Administrator, Colonel Bob Cabana. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Hey, this, this is quick. It's always great to come back to Florida uh, you know, if you read the individual resumes of this crew, each one of them is outstanding. And when you put them all together, it, this is a pretty darn amazing crew. Everything's tracking well so far for launch. We're looking forward to the flight readiness review on Monday. Um, all the issues are on track, and uh, I'm waiting for next Friday. I want to see these guys off. I, you've heard me say it before. The only way I think it could be better if, if I could go with them, and then I think that would be even better yet. But uh, no, it's a, it's a great crew. I don't know if you saw it, but the mobile launcher is back out on the pad for testing, and we're getting ready for Artemis II next year also, and everything's moving along on that, and that's going to be another amazing effort by NASA as we uh, return to the moon. With that, I'm going to turn it over to Janet Petro, the KSC Center Director, and we'll hear a few words from her. Janet? Yeah, good afternoon. It is another uh, hot day here at uh, Florida Spaceport, but we are super excited to Welcome our four uh, crew members here. This is our seventh operational mission to the International Space Station under the Commercial Crew Program. And even though we have a robust manifest here at the Kennedy Space Center, we are always super excited when we're going to stick a human on the rocket and putting our crew um, it is always uh, ups a level of excitement. I want to thank everyone who behind the scenes have been working so hard and diligently towards this um, moment uh, when we launch the crew uh, this coming Friday. And now um, I want to uh, introduce you to someone whose leadership has really been instrumental in the success of the commercial crew program as we've returned humans to low earth orbit from American soil. And so serving as a deputy manager for our commercial crew program here at the Kenny Space Center, let me introduce you and join me in welcoming Dana Hutcherson. Thank you. I'm very excited to be here and welcome to the crew who just arrived. Um, it's hard to believe we're on our seventh rotational mission, eighth launch of sending astronauts to the International Space Station from U.S. soil. It's an honor to represent the commercial crew program today to welcome this international crew. And I really appreciate the crew trusting us with the, and the team to provide that safe, safe and healthy transportation vehicle. Commercial crew is delivering on its promise of providing safe, reliable, and cost-effective transportation to and from low Earth orbit. The crew will fly on Dragon Endurance spacecraft provided by SpaceX and will spend about six months abo aboard the International Space Station conducting critical science and research experiments that will enhance our understanding of how space affects the human body and will look to return to the moon and eventually travel to Mars. These successful partnerships with NASA and the commercial companies allows us to focus our research on exploration and research, expanding, expanding NASA's ability to explore our universe and inspire the world. Now I'd like to turn it over to Eric Vanderwall, who leads the International Space Station Program Houston office for the European Space Agency. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dana. Uh, my name is Eric Vanderwall. I'm the head of the uh, European Space Agency Houston office. And it's really a great honor to be here to welcome this amazing crew. As Bob Cabana often said, it's good to be flying again. And this is very applicable to ESA. This time we flew on crew two, we flew on crew three, we flew on crew four, and here we are with Andy on crew seven. It's so great to see Andy about to embark on his second flight to the ISS, this time for a long duration stay, six months, 
Also, he will be the first European pilot on the Crew Dragon vehicle. And later, we're going to see him in the role of the ISS commander on the space station. When I look at these astronauts, I do not only see a group of very committed, talented, gifted individuals, but I also see a fantastic picture that displays the multicultural endeavor and the incredible partnership that we have in the ISS. Doing science is key for the ESA ISS program, and we look forward to the extension of the science complement and with the execution of the science complement of the Jugend mission. There will be more than 30 European experiments, and this will contribute to the continuation of European science in lowered orbit and help push the boundaries of human space exploration, not only in lowered orbit, but also beyond. I want to thank the whole NASA team, all the SpaceX teams, all the teams at ESA who worked so hard to get us where we are today, and most importantly, ensure that we're flying safely. I want to read a quote from a former US president. It goes as follows. Mankind is drawn to the heavens for the same reasons we were once drawn into unknown lands and across the open sea. We choose to explore space because doing so improves our lives and lifts our national spirit. Let us continue this journey. George W. Bush. With that, I say Jasmine, Andy, Satoshi, and Constantine, I wish you all a great journey. Go Crew 7, and Andy, go Reise. Thank you. And with this, I would like to hand over to Mr. Sakai, the JAXA ISS program manager. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you for the introduction. Uh, my name is uh, Sakai Junich, ISS program manager of JAXA. And first of all, uh, on behalf of JAXA, I would like to sincerely express uh, my appreciation to NASA, SpaceX, all the colleagues, and uh, colleagues, and to uh, participate in uh, uh, Cruise 7 uh, launch operations and uh, launch preparation and uh, continuous uh, ISS operations. For uh, it is a uh, fourth uh, year uh, since. Uh, Crew transportation from U.S. soil uh, has res resumed, and uh, JAXA also has, has sent to uh, and will will send the Japanese astronauts to ISS for four consecutive years. I believe this is uh, uh, close and uh, uh, <coughs> continued partnership between. Uh, international partners both uh, has brought uh, these remarkable uh, remarkable uh, opportunities to, to us so this is the four, this is a uh, first flight uh, since uh, Japanese government uh, determined to expand extend the ISS operation beyond 2024. And th this mission will be the second flight and the second long-term uh, res resistance in uh, ISS for Japanese astronaut Furukawa Satoshi. He will, he will work out, uh, uh, he, he will work out a uh, variety of missions uh, ranging from uh, uh, life, material, physical science to uh, technological demonstration for future lunar exploration and uh, post ISS uh, utilizations by utilizing a keyboard unique keyboard's unique environment to conduct um, various missions with uh, in, in, in collaboration with uh, uh, astronauts from international partners. I'm confident that 
that this progress will be, uh, this progress won't stop and leads to our challenge to the um, Mars, um, uh, moons, Mars, and beyond. So I'm uh, I'm looking forward to see. Com I'm looking forward to uh, coming this uh, launch and for uh, continuing. Continue. We'll continue for uh, final preparations. So, uh, got speed, guys. Um, see you six months later. Thank you. And at this time, we will now open it up for the crew to offer some final remarks. Um, in front of you, we have a multinational crew, um, Jasmine Mokbelli, NASA astronaut and Crew 7 commander, Andreas Mogensen, ESA astronaut and Crew 7 pilot, Satoshi Furukawa, JAXA astronaut and Crew 7 mission specialist, and Konstantin Borisov, Roscosmos cosmonaut and Crew 7 mission specialist. Um, if the crew would like to step forward when you're ready to offer your remarks. Thank you. Good afternoon. You can probably tell from the huge smiles on our faces that we're extremely excited um, to finally be here at Kennedy Space Center and for the journey we're about to embark on. One of the first tasks that we had to accomplish as a crew when we were assigned was to design our mission patch. Um, we had to think about what do we want this patch to symbolize, what do we want it to represent, and what were the things about this mission that were really meaningful to us. So if you don't mind, I'd like to talk about just a few of the elements of the patch um, that I think are very special to us. First, if you look at our patch, the Earth is the central aspect of it. It is the focus of the patch. It's meant to be very beautiful. I, I'm sure it's not as beautiful as when we'll look back uh, on Earth from the unique vantage point of low Earth orbit. Um, but we wanted it to represent that everything we do on this mission, we hope ultimately benefits our beautiful home planet and those on it. Next, the, the tail of the dragon rises into a golden star. This to us symbolizes the ascent to the stars. Spaceflight is extremely difficult. Um, it requires perseverance, it requires vigilance, and this was kind of our thank you to the pioneers of spaceflight who paved the way for us to be here today and for all those on our team who've prepared us for this moment and will support us throughout the mission and upon our return. And then the last uh, element I would love to point out, uh, as others have mentioned, on the uh, rise to the star are the colors white, red, and blue. Those colors encompass the colors that make up the flags of our four nations. We are extremely proud, and I know I personally am, am humbled to be a member of this incredible crew, where if you look at our four patches, you'll see a different nation's flag on each one. And we hope this represents um, what we can accomplish when we work together in unity and uh, cooperate together. And we think this really is what the International Space Station is all about. And lastly, I'd uh, again like to thank those that uh, supported us, uh, especially our families. With that, I'd like to hand it over to Andreas Mogensen, the pilot for Crew 7. And as stated, he'll be uh, our commander on board the International Space Station. Good afternoon, everyone. It's an honor to represent the European Space Agency as pilot of Crew 7, and it's an honor to be part of this very international crew. Not only are we an international crew, but our training and preparation have taken us around the world. And I'd like to thank all of our partner agencies, NASA, ESA, JAXA, and Roscosmos for preparing us so well and getting us to this point where we are today uh, ready to embark on a long duration mission to the International Space Station. As soon as I landed uh, in Soyuz uh, in Kazakhstan after my first mission in 2015, 
I knew that I wanted to go back to space. I wanted to go back to the International Space Station. And I'm so happy that uh, the day is almost here. It's hard to describe what an incredible place the International Space Station is. I didn't realize it uh, until shortly before docking uh, on my first mission when I looked out the windows of the Soyuz spacecraft and I could see the gigantic solar arrays stretching out in space next to me. And then opening the hatch and uh, flying on board the space station, I realized just what a unique uh, and incredible laboratory that we, uh, humanity, has built in low Earth orbit over the past 20, 25 years. And I'm so excited to get back up there uh, and to participate in the groundbreaking research and technology uh, development uh, that we do on board the space station. As Jasmine noted, what we do up there is for all of us here on Earth uh, and hopefully will benefit uh, our society for many, many years in the future. And I can't wait to get up there, back up there uh, and to continue the incredible work that we do. Thank you. Hello, uh, I'm happy to be here at the launching uh, landing facility because it was formerly called shuttle landing facility. And in my previous mission on the International Space Station in 2011, I was fortunate to welcome the last space shuttle crew members of SCS-135. And this time, I look forward to flying uh, Cruise 7. And uh, I am very excited to work uh, in the outstanding international team of NASA, SpaceX, ESA, CSA, Roscosmos, and JAXA. And on board the International Space Station, uh, using the special, unique environment like long-lasting uh, microgravity, uh, long uh, microgravity, uh, I'd like to contribute to uh, those that will make our life on Earth better. For example, uh, accelerating new medicine development. In addition, uh, I'm keen to work on uh, technology demonstration towards the uh, human expression to the moon in the future. And I'd like to hand over to Kosha. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm more than excited, actually. It's so hard to say what I feel because the training has been very intense. We traveled all the world. We enjoyed a lot of classes, lectures. And you know, every next day is training. You train again, you train again. And it's uh, so hard to imagine that soon we'll just do similar things, but it will not be training, but just in four days in the evening, we wake up and we go to space. I'm, I'm very excited, really. I'm excited. I'm honored to be part of the international crew so much because it's the most international crew ever because you cannot make it more because four people, four, <laughs> four nationalities. And you know, like experienced astronauts and cosmonauts, they say that when you go to the ISS and you look at the planet, you see that there are no borders. And really, I want to continue um, and to convey that feeling and that emotion and also to support the cooperation which we have been having so far and we continue like that. So I'm very thankful to all the agencies, to all the people on the ground making this happen and also to our families and to the crew which I have been happily training so far. Thanks a lot. Thank you. And now we'll open it up to the media that are here with us for a brief Q&A. If you could come up to the mic and state your name and affiliation and to whom you're question is directed. Thank you. Hi, thanks for uh, taking our questions today. My name is Richard Tribu. I'm with the Orlando Sentinel. Uh, this is really for the entire crew. Uh, you are going up and becoming part of Expedition 70, uh, which is also going to be a bunch of rookies. I mean, uh, Satoshi is the only long-term one, as well as the uh, uh, one person from the Soyuz. So what I question to you is, uh, have any of the rookies on this mission uh, been given advice on what to look out for? And Satoshi, are you holding back on anything to see if they mess up so that you can tell them lightly how to correct that action? Thank you. Um, so what a lot of the uh, 
veterans uh, have told me, in, including some of my own crewmates, uh, is it, it's been interesting going through training. You know, we do simple things like we have to fold a piece of cloth. And I think, OK, I'm going to fold this cloth. It's going to take me two minutes. But it turns out uh, when you don't have gravity helping you, even simple things like that or just how you position yourself for, uh, Simple things like that will take uh, experience to learn how to do them in space and take a lot of time. And also just on a larger level of just focusing on the, what you're doing every day, we have uh, numerous things we're doing up there from capturing the vehicles that are bringing us supplies and science experiments to performing spacewalks to performing science experiments on ourselves and on other things and to just focus on what you're doing in the moment and uh, lastly not forget to look out the window. <laughs> Well, uh, from operations point of view, the whole crew members are well trained and professional. And microgravity is special and unique, but uh, it's a kind of minor thing. Uh, you can catch it up with a uh, good uh, learning curve, so no problem at all. But my uh, small advice was uh, right after, especially right after uh, insertion, uh, just move slowly. Don't move your head abruptly. That would make you in a bad situation. My name is Sita Dunge. I'm from the Danish newspaper Ekstrabladet, and I have a question for Andreas Mogensen. It's going to be in Danish. Du er den første ikke-amerikaner, der skal være ikke bare pilot, men også kommandør på en ISS-mission, en SpaceX-mission. Kan du ikke prøve at sætte på ord på, hvad det betyder, ikke bare for dig, men også for et land som Danmark at være repræsenteret? Ja, altså først og fremmest så er det jo en kæmpe ære uh, at blive udnævnt som pilot på SpaceX Dragon rumskibet. Um, og det er, er takket være uh, de sidste syv år, jeg har arbejdet på Johnson Space Center i Houston, Texas. Men det er også takket være uh, det samarbejde, som ESA har etableret sammen med NASA gennem de sidste 20 år ombord på den internationale rumstation. Og det viser, hvordan uh, vi i Europa er, er vokset med opgaven, uh, er blevet dygtigere og dygtigere og har fået mere og mere ansvar. Um, og det ser vi især på de kommende månemissioner, Artemis-missionerne, hvor ESA udvikler og bygger det, det, vi kalder The European Service Module, som er en del af Orion-rumskibet, der skal tage de næste mennesker til månen. Og også nogle af de allervigtigste elementer eller moduler af Gateway-rumstationen, som vi skal bygge i kredsløb om månen. Så det betyder utrolig meget for mig personligt, men også for hele Europa og selvfølgelig også Danmark, at, at blive inkluderet på øh, NASA's øh, månemissioner på den måde, vi er. Øh, vi kommer til at se europæiske astronauter på missioner på, øh, til månen, og også på overfladen af månen. Og det synes jeg er sindssygt spændende, fordi det kan være med til at inspirere den næste generation af unge til at læse øh, naturvidenskabelige øh, og tekniske fag, og forhåbentlig øh, ja, vælge karriere som forskere, ingeniører, teknikere, og være med til at udvikle alle de løsninger, som skal forbedre vores samfund i fremtiden og løse mange af de udfordringer, vi står overfor. Jeg kan forestille mig, at der er mange følelser, der går igennem dig lige nu. Er der, og frygt måske også er en af dem. Er der noget, du især frygter, kan komme til at gå galt, når I er afsted? Altså, risiko er jo en del af arbejdet, kan man sige. Og det er også meget det, vi har, har trænet med henblik på at kunne reagere ordentligt. Man kommer ikke udenom risikoen, men samtidig så er det en del af Altså, når man, når man vil videreudvikle og videre, så, så er der altid en risiko forbundet med det, og det, det kender, den kender vi alle sammen til. Men man kan sige, at første skridt på vejen, det er i dag, hvor vi er ankommet til Kennedy, og så, den fortsætter så forhåbentlig fredag, hvis vejret tillader det. Hej, Ken Kramer, Space Up Close. Uh, congratulations on being the most international crew, and good, good luck with your flight. So, I'm a scientist. I'd like to ask all of you, Tell me about the most interesting one or two science experiments that you're going to be doing when you're up there, and if any of you will be doing spacewalks. Thank you. Um, w one of the uh, interesting experiments I'll be uh, doing is a 3D metal print experiment uh, that ESA is launching to the International Space Station. Uh, 3D metal print is a technology that can 
uh, be a game changer in the future. Uh, on board the International Space Station, we uh, receive a lot of cargo vehicles that contain uh, reserve parts, spare parts, because things have a, a tendency to break down, to be, to be worn out, and we spend a lot of time uh, replacing and repairing items. Um, when we travel uh, further into space, when, on, as a first step to the moon, and later, hopefully onwards to Mars, uh, we need to be uh, a lot more self-sufficient. And one of the ways we can do that is by being able to print uh, spare parts uh, or tools uh, in space. And, and hopefully 3D metal prints is a, a first step towards that. Uh, we have two experiments which are really peculiar in the Russian segment. Uh, they're peculiar because uh, either they are very interesting or they are very hard. The interesting experiment for me would be, uh, the most interesting one is the quail eggs experiment. We are taking quail eggs and we see how they develop in zero G and also in gravity because we have a special chamber which rotates and actually makes uh, gravity. So you compare the development of the egg and we see is it the radiation itself only or is it the radiation plus the zero G which affect the development of the, of the egg. That's very interesting to see the results. And the one which is hardest, I've spent so many hours doing that, would be um, ultrasound experiment where me and my colleagues, we are doing ultrasound to each other. It's really hard because we have to catch the particular organ and we do it many times. We do it after three days, after seven days, after two months. We see how the liquid shifts long term and we can evaluate how it develops and also see how we prepare ourselves for long-term flights. Oh. One of the things we can do up there that I think is really uh, interesting and, and exciting as someone who uh, doesn't have a background as a scientist is um, when you look um, when you look at cell cultures here on Earth because we do have the effects of gravity when you d um, develop a cell culture, it's two-dimensional. But when you do that in the weightless environment of space, you can grow those cell cultures in a three-dimensional way, which is, of course, how our um, tissues are. Um, so that's something I think is really interesting and has a lot of applications for uh, medicine and, and science as well, and just incredible to think about uh, who came up with that. I look forward to a uh, protein crystallization experiment. Uh, under zero gravity in space, uh, we can obtain better quality protein, protein crystallization. After bringing it back to Earth and analyzing it, uh, we can know the uh, detailed 3D structure of the protein crystals. And uh, a reaction site of a protein is like a keyhole. Imagine a keyhole. By knowing the detailed uh, structure of the keyhole you c and using a uh, computer system, you can e efficiently and effectively, effectively find a, a key that best fits to the, uh, the keyhole, which is a candidate for new medicine. So this is an example of accelerating uh, new medicine development and will make our life on Earth better. Hello, my name is John McGill from Wyandotte Connects, and this question is for Commander Mogabelli. Uh, last time we talked was in Houston last year, and you were trying to decide whether it was going to be uh, a yo-yo or a glider. Have you made a decision? You know, I, I ended up bringing a different toy that is actually neither of those, but I don't want to reveal it because I've actually brought it as a gift for my crewmates, so I guess I'll have to reveal it in space. Hi, I'm Melanie for ESA. This is a question for Andreas. If you could tell us a little bit about some of the special items that you might be bringing on board. Well, I see you brought one of the items with you. <laughs> uh, Rasmus Klopp, uh, a Danish um, cartoon figure, uh, is one of the items that I'm bringing. Uh, Rasmus Klopp is characterized by being incredibly uh, inquisitive and uh, Spends a lot of his time in the cartoons, exploring the world on his uh, ship with his friends. Um, I have a, a lot of other uh, cultural 
um, items with me as well on this mission uh, from uh, Denmark and uh, the Faroe Islands and, Nor uh, and Greenland, sorry. Um, and I will be revealing them uh, step by step throughout the mission. Thank you. Hello there, I'm Greg Diesel Walk with Earth Sky, and my question is for Satoshi. What's the biggest difference in your training uh, with the Dragon versus your previous mission in the Soyuz? Um, okay. Um, to me, the essentially the same, but the emphasis is more on the uh, theory or how things work, uh, sy the systems work uh, when it comes to Soyuz. And regarding the uh, Crew Dragon system, it, the, the emphasis is more on the operation side, and either works. Both are good. Hi, I'm Mikio from NHK. My question is for Waka uh, Furukawa-san. So, so can you please uh, answer in Japanese, please? And uh, my question is in Japanese. So Furukawa-san, no, today, you Kennedy Space Center, you arrived at the Space Center. So, first, what are you feeling now? あと打ち上げまであと let me talk in Japanese because he, he asked in Japanese. Et, et, mazu, kochira, ano, shuttle, shuttle landing facility ni korarete totemo koe ni omotte mas. Sakyodo, ano, boto no ego de mo hanes sasi itadakimashita kedo mo, saigo no space shuttle o, o, kuru o, omukai shite, shite orimashita no de, totemo koe ni omoimas. De, ano, uchiage made no itska kai ni wa, え、様々な最後の詰めの準備をしていきます。Hi, Will Robinson Smith with Space Flight Now. My question is for Jasmine. Um, you'll be joining your turtle crew or teammates um, on the station, Woody and Frank. Uh, what's it like continuing what Raja Lovingly called the turtle takeover? And you know, what advice did you get from your classmates that have flown and come back to Earth? Yeah, so I think most people uh, know by this point our, our turtle class, the uh, group of astronaut candidates selected in 2017 is extremely close. I love uh, Raja's turtle takeover. Um, and I'm extremely excited to see, uh, to see Frank and Woody up there. And also, while I'm up there, to welcome Laurel and eventually um, Matt Dominic as well. Um, we hope to continue the turtle takeover <laughs> in space. Um, they passed on some, some of the words I've already said, but you know, the big things are, don't, don't forget to be in the moment. Don't forget to look out the window. Um, and don't forget to just take things one step at a time. It's an uh, incredible experience, but it is also a lot of hard work at the same time. And so they've just uh, tried to prepare me for that and also um, passed on some words about how to handle being away from um, my family for a long period of time as well. So I've appreciated that and I'm very excited to see them on orbit uh, and to greet the others as well. Thank you. Hi, I'm Mark Stone, Florida Media Now. I know that uh, you've all worked extremely hard to get where you are. And for all of you, I think it's safe to say it's the fulfillment of a lifelong dream to go on a mission like this. Given that, from a personal standpoint, what is the one highlight of this whole thing for you? What's the pinnacle? Uh, it is indeed a very big thing. It's hard to grasp with your mind. Uh, but for me, it's not one, it's two. It's flying in weightlessness for so long. Not for 20 seconds, not for a minute, but like for days and hours. like. 
go with, go to bed in zero g, wake up and suddenly know that you are still in zero g and you float out. For me, that's that's the emotion. And also looking out and see our planet, the dark, like the the night, the day, the sunset. That's that's for me. It's not one thing. It's two things. That's how at least I imagine it right now. to um, Kosha, I think one of the biggest things I really look forward to is looking back at Earth. It's just such a unique way to look at it, and I don't know what the feelings will be, what the emotions will be when I do that, but from every single uh, astronaut that's already experienced it, uh, they said it has been something life-changing for them, and so uh, I look forward to seeing it from that new perspective. Since my two crewmates both mentioned looking down at the Earth, I'm going to make a plug for looking out at the universe because that's one of the things that really struck me uh, on my first flight uh, was uh, sitting in Cupola looking out at the night sky, out of the stars when we were on the uh, night side of the Earth. Um, because if you give your eyes uh, a few seconds to adjust to the darkness and you turn off the lights in Cupola and in, in Node 3, you suddenly see billions and billions of stars. And it reminds you of how almost infinitely large our universe is and what, in many ways, how, how insignificant we are in many ways, us and the Earth in the, in the, in the cosmos. Um, and that, to me, is, is incredibly exciting because when something is as large, almost infinitely large as the universe, it must mean that there are so many discoveries waiting for us uh, in the future and must mean that there are so many possibilities for us out there. It is hard to describe just how big it looks from the International Space Station. And uh, that makes me exciting for the, uh, excited for the future uh, because I think even though we've been exploring space for 50 or 60 years now, in many ways we've, we've only just begun and there are still so many exciting discoveries waiting for us. For me, uh, back to microgravity, uh, because I believe my body remembers that microgravity mode. So hopefully my body uh, be gets accustomed to it quickly and uh, work efficiently in our business trip to the International Space Station. Thank you. I wish you all success and Godspeed. Thank you. Manuel Masanti, Exploración Espacial Punto News. A question for Jasmine. I know uh, this, this happened before, but uh, how does it feel to not only fly into space for the first time, but also being a commander? You know, I view um, my role as commander, I, I get to work with uh, these three incredible gentlemen. You know, Satoshi's already experienced a long duration space flight. Uh, Andy has also already had a space flight. Kosha and I get to do this for the first time, which is, it's nice to uh, have someone to share that uh, experience and excitement with. Um, but, but for me, it's just really an honor. Um, I was so excited when I found out this crew would be four different nations, because as I said, that was something that really resonated with me um, personally. And I, I didn't know um, any of my crewmates very well before we were assigned together but it's such a special bond you form and create. And, um, you know, I'm honored uh, to serve as the commander, uh, especially for my first uh, space flight. Hi, crew. My name is Astrid from Space Scout. And my question is, what portions of this expedition are you most excited for? And what is the most challenging? Well, I think it, it's interesting. It's hard to say what will be the most challenging uh, until we're up there. For me, this is the first time, so I don't know. But something I know I'm really looking forward to uh, is hopefully getting to do a spacewalk uh, during this expedition. That, for me, during training um, has been one of the most uh, challenging aspects and something that made me feel really uh, 
fulfilled when I started to finally figure out how to work with the suit and not fight it and to be efficient. So uh, something I really look forward to and hope I get to do is uh, go out on a spacewalk. Thank you, enjoy the ride. Pass, one, two, three, oh, there we go. <laughs> and that's all the time we have for questions today from the media. Um, as a reminder, launch for Crew 7 is currently targeted for 3.49 a.m. Eastern Time on Friday, August 25th from Launch Complex 39A here at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Live NASA TV coverage will begin at 11.45 p.m. Eastern Time on Thursday, August 24th. Thank you and go Crew 7. <laughs>